legendary here for Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you man sort of the gaming dragon game coming back at you. Now let's play episode of Supernova, Super Fangs Path. So yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like Prem to Access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. And also, y'all, we're having movie night officially on October 5th, Thursday. Just uh, keep keep posted, uh, keep posted for a time. It's probably going to be 7 p.m. Eastern Eastern, uh, Eastern Central Time Zone, and we're going to be watching uh, a v, uh, VHS, one of my favorite horror movies. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm January up, and let's go. Don't sneeze, damn it, don't sneeze. Okay, all right. They push a barrier with one arm, holding it almost like a large shield. Just a hail of gunfire glances off me, I take no such precautions, flying straight to, straight at the group. Under the helmet, I'm wearing a broad smirk. I land in front of a panicked crook who tries to aim his submachine gun at my face. Grabbing the muzzle, I jerk it to the side and ram my shoulder into him. As he stumbles backwards, my armored fist meets his stomach. In the meantime, Super Fang lifts the crate he had been using as shelter. He then throws it with far less power than I, know, than I know he could muster. The men scatter, some diving to the ground as the crate sails past. That's all the distraction the tiger needs to re-engage. Hex, meanwhile, is engaged in their own fight, using the shields mounted using the shields mounted to their arms to block and strike at once. I spare enough attention for the rest of us to put up a barrier to the side of Fang. One of the vans suddenly springs to life, tires screeching as it launches forward. It then crashes straight through a service door. On it! It leaves me and Hex to deal with the remaining gunmen. Fine by me. One of the men throws down his gun and tries to run through the smashed opening only to smack right into a suddenly generated barrier. Nice one! That's when I noticed that another one has snuck off to the side of a walkway. He's now balancing a strange, strangely large-looking gun on the railing, aiming it at the hyena. Watch out! A barrier takes shape, but as light, but as light seems to gather at the tip of the weird gun, I feel a sudden panic. Racking purely on instinct, I kick off the ground to the side. As the force of the blast smashes into my torso, I'm sent flying. I land on the floor in a heap. For several moments, it's as if the whole world is nothing but pure white. As it fades, I stumble to my feet. The metal of my armor is sizzling, cracked to a significant degree, although I'm unhurt. My chest area looks almost like a crater from a meteor impact. I raise my head to see the dude who just shot me throw down the weapon and run. He doesn't get far. Slamming into his back, I throw him down and smash his head onto the metal walkway for good measure. With that, I realize the fight is pretty much done. Holy! You okay? I wave them off, panting. I'm pretty sure you just saved my life. Don't mention it. Holy crap, was that the energy weapon you mentioned the other day? Uh, no, actually. This one seemed even more powerful. Well, shit. Anyway, let's clean up here before the cops arrive. We can say Fang happened to be in the area and stopped the van after he saw it crashing out the warehouses here. Sounds good to me. I'll check in with him. I tap my helmet twice. Super Fang! <sighs> oh, there's a moment of silence. I assume so that Gil can connect me to Vents. Hell good on my end. Awesome. We're done here too. I'll be at the rooftop to the east. Let's regroup there while Hex gets their credit. On my way then. I nod to Hex. Chat after you two wrap chat right after you wrap up? Yeah, I'll be right over. This shouldn't take long. Alright. God. I just got that armor. Really bad if he hadn't. I relay what happened to Vince while we chill on the roof. He in turn tells me how he had to rip both dudes out of their seats and let the van crash into a concrete wall. Ah oh, man, I can't believe I missed that. Next time I get to chase the next time I get to chase the fleeing car. Ha! I'm glad you were there to, there to shield Hex. Man, can you believe the power on that gun? I touch the cracked parts of the armor. Yeah, it's crazy. Hope we find out where these weapons are coming from. You think they'll talk? Dunno, probably not, but I'm sure there'll be something else that can point the investigators in the right direction. I know the Baron will take a lot of interest in what happened here. Will he know we were involved? Fence shrugs. Hex's story about me noticing the fleeing van is good enough. We'll just say I was helping you do flying practice in the area. Sure. Oh, and there they are. Alright, that's all handled. Good work tonight, boys. Hey, you too, bud. Oh, Templar. Seriously, dude. Thanks. Don't know if I could have dodged that one in time. Ah, oh, come on. It's all good. That's why we went as a group, to watch each other's backs. Lahina nods, smiling. You should come down to the Grey Cape sometime. Hang out with the rest of us. Thank you, y'all. Off your time. The 
Great Cape? It's a, a bar where the unsanctioned heroes hang out sometimes, but I don't know if Templar can be seen going there. Yeah, good thing nobody knows who's under the helmet then, no? Sounds fun. Where is this place? The entrance is in an alley near Porter Theater, right to the left of the subway entrance. You'll see a rusty red door. Just say you're a fan, and they shouldn't give you too much trouble. We have hanger ons coming in all the time. Isn't gathering like that dangerous? You know, with the cops and stuff? What are they going to do, raid us? They'd be starting a war with all of us, and they'd be smart enough to avoid that so far. The police the police leaves vigilantes alone for the most part. As long as no lines are being crossed, it's usually fine, if a little tense. Yeah, it's a shitty arrangement, but a functional one, for now. I suppose I could pay a visit to this bar, then. When do you usually hang out over there? On the weekends, usually. Not too late at night. That's when I like to patrol for troublemakers. Sounds good. Hope to see you there, Hex. Same, Templar. I think you'll like the folk that I run with. Hey, the uh, folk Templar runs with are perfectly fine, too. Well, I have a fondness for some of them, sure. Hex's profile has been updated. Alright. I keep forgetting where it is. Extras, okay. Look at Hex's profile real quick. Anyway, since they're the only vigilante I know at the moment, I'd love to hear their perspective on what we're all doing, and just to learn more about them and the other vigilantes that hang out there. Okay? That wasn't too much. It was just a little, little snippet. Okay. I accompany Vince to the nearest hideout, where he changes back into his clothes and we part our ways at the subway station again. Nope. Oh, training room. Our reckoning comes the next day, when Baron and Black strolls into the training facility while Fang and I are hanging out there. Thought I'd find you two, the two of you here. You mean Gil told you where we? Told Gil told you we were here. Uh huh. I got you a little adventure in the port area yesterday. Is that right? It was barely anything. Some vigilante busted an arms trade, and you two just happened to be there. The area is good for training, you know, like last time. Mm hmm. I've heard that the grapevine that Templar and Superfang were supposedly with this vigilante. Pencil said a surprisingly convincing chortle. Nah, I just dropped in when I saw the van trying to smash its way through half the docks. Tiplaw was just there doing flying practice. Guess they saw him afterwards. Wow, this is such a good job lying his ass off, I'm almost ready to believe in myself. He was the one to suggest I train without armor today, too, and I realized now it was so nobody would see that it was cracked. Isn't it healing? Doesn't the armor heal? The armor should, should be able to heal. It was fun watching the action. I hope I can participate next time, though. The Baron maintains his silence. But as hell well, it's impossible to read his expression. I'm guessing Fane keeps his association with Hex and possibly others like them a secret from the rest of the team. And fair enough, with how mad the rat was at the mere idea of Templar not being legit with spec, I doubt he'd be happy. Did you get any details about who got caught? The police department has been cagey about it, but I've gathered that we are dealing with some high-powered weaponry, not the kind you'd find in the hands of regular mobsters. Huh, any idea where they could be coming from? I, need to, I intend to investigate just that. I care to hang out at the docks again. Ooh, you want me to get along? Sure. Good. I'll be in touch. Wait, hold on. Can I come too? Stick to flying practice for now. Mm, fine. Mara's about to turn around and stops when I speak out again. Since you're here, though, care to give me a little demonstration with Superfang? Could, it could be good for you to. Could be good for me to watch the two of you spar. Turning his mask to me, the rat seems to consider, then shakes his head. You won't get anything useful out of it unless we really go at it, and I don't care to use my any to use my dirty tricks on the champ right now. Coffee time. No, oh, come on, I don't need to transform. Oh, really? Sure, it's been a while since we trained together. Could be fun. Fang, I'll never understand how being left bruised was fun for you. As long as I was learning, something was well worth it. The Baron's chuckle echoes inside his helmet. Sure, why not? Gotta make sure you're keeping yourself sharp. Barely shifting his stance and holding, still holding his cane, the Baron waits for Vince to make the first move. Unlike his wild leaps and charges from yesterday, Vince makes a slow, deliberate approach with no sudden moves. His eyes seem to be focused on the cane. Even without transforming, the tiger has a huge advantage over the rat in size and weight. I very much doubt the Baron is a match to Super Fang, Super Fang in strength, which means the only way the Baron comes out on top is to stay evasive and not let him get cornered. Before I can finish the thought, the rat moves. With lightning speed, he dashes, his left foot sliding to sweep Fang's right from under him. The tiger manages to lift his leg just in time, but the Baron isn't done. In one smooth motion, he brings the cane around. It makes a loud crack as it hits the tiger in the shoulder. The sound makes me wince. Unlike Super Fang, who, 
I'm like Superfang, who seems unbothered. That is, until the Baron withdraws the cane, only to use it to jab the tiger straight in the solar plexus. This time, Vince lets out a gasp, retreating from while clutching his abdomen. Hmm, sloppy, champ. And just warming up! Throwing caution to the wind, Fang goes on the offensive, swinging his huge fists, forcing the Baron to dodge lest he be knocked on his ass. From one flurry of attacks, he lashes out with an open paw, trying to catch the cane, snatch the cane. The Baron throws it up slightly to avoid this, catching it with his other hand. Rude! He speaks as he reverses the grip on it, putting it out of the tiger's reach. He taught me to always disarm first! The words are followed by a grunt as he blocks a strong kick. Fair enough! Anyway, I think that's enough for now. What? Come on! I didn't land a proper hit yet! Guess that means you have some training to do as well. See ya! Ignoring his pout, the Baron pats Vince's shoulder before heading for the door. <laughs> I mean, he wouldn't stand a chance if he transformed and fought for real. Huh, <laughs> I'll be so sure of that. Baron at Black Axel has, has a lot of tricks up his sleeve. Oh, I'm sure he does. Either way, that was fun. Excuse me, that was fun to watch. No, but I wanted to give you a better showing. Heh, <laughs> you don't need to... <coughs> Sorry about that, y'all. Heh, <laughs> you don't need to impress me. The tiger sighs, staying quiet before his expression brightens again. By the way, I'm going to pay a visit to Lila after this. My costume got a bit torn last night. I think I was when I was swinging through that window. I'll have her take a look. Want to come with? She said she wanted to meet you sometime. Oh, yeah, I'd like that. Where are we going? She's usually at her lab at Brownford. Have you been there? Nope. Well, the campus is nice. I think you'll like it. Cool. I can drive us this time. Sounds good. Brownford isn't inside the city like my own college or the one Fang went to, which means it has a lot more space to work with, and it shows. The wide walkways are not entirely devoid of people, but most students seem to be seem to be away for spring break. Vince has Vince has us take a leisurely stroll across campus as we head to the physics building. You really know your way around here, huh? Well, I drop by every week or so. Do you tear your costume that often? Nope, I just like hanging out with Lila, you know? She doesn't mind me being there while she works. We walk to the door with Copycat's name on a plaque. Vince knocks, but when the door opens instead of a cat, we are greeted by a short male rabbit. No office hours today! Oh, it's you. Hi, Blake. Is Lila, is Lila around? The rabbit regards me with a frown. Oh, sorry, this is Nick, a friend of mine. Nick, this is Blake, Lala's grad student assistant. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh-huh, same. Dr. Lawson's, Dr. Lawson's in the lab. Oh, cool, we'll find her there then. There you go. Coffee time. With a roll of the eyes, Blake sighs and closes the door behind him. I promise not to touch anything. Yeah, yeah, I was about to head there myself anyway, so come on. I give Vince a questioning look as we walk behind the rabbit, but the tiger just smiles at me. Highly unlikely this Blake knows anything, but who knows, I could be wrong. I find Copycat scribbling something in a small notebook while glancing into a microscope. The lab is otherwise empty right now, despite a multitude of workstations. As soon as the cat notices us approaching, her face lights up with a wide smile. Aww. Oh, look, it's my favorite lab assistant! Her words are clearly directed at Vince, and I hear Blake grumbling under his breath. I'm standing right here. Hi! And this must be Nick. Good to meet you, Dr. Lawson. Oh, please, you can call me Lila. Can I call you that? Nope. You're, you're just my student. The rabbit rolls his eyes again. He would run a reaction. Call me if I'm needed. Actually, I need you right now. If any, mind letting Blake take another blood sample for my little project? Oh, uh, right now? It's just a tiny, it's just a teensy needle. I know, it's fine. I just thought I'd introduce you two properly first. We can chat just fine on our own. She reaches out to pat Vince's cheek, a gesture the tiger is clearly used to. Uh, you're still shedding a lot. I tried this new shampoo, but I guess it's not working. I'll recommend something to you later. For now, go you two. Chop chop. Looking rather amused, Blake nevertheless leads Vince away. Copycat, meanwhile, picks her notebook up from the desk while gesturing for me to take a seat. I assume you don't need an actual introduction with me, do you? I'm sure a tiger has mentioned my colorful past. Oh, yeah, he has. I had no idea you had retired instead of, you know. She scrunches up her nose, narrowing her eyes at me. Nick, do I look retired to you? No, just... Then he called me that, didn't he? I'm gonna slap that boy upside the head one of these days. Well, I think he meant you retiring from... Yeah, yeah, I know what he meant. Someday he'll accept that this was always my real work, though. Not what I did while wearing that stupid leotard. Look in the direction Vince and the bunny went, then back to the cat. Are you researching a 
Powers? With Vince's blood sample and stuff? Oh god, no. Never. Her denial is surprisingly sharp, and I'm a little taken aback. Oh, really? How come? I'm a strong believer that there are some areas where the light of science shouldn't shine. Alright y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye! Oh,